Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this checkpoint 3 for your ecosystem project for Science 7. So first off to get started, when you know you have your checkpoint 3 ready to go, you want to make sure you have um, the following to do. So you want to make a copy of it, right, of your entire presentation and name it again checkpoint 3. Right, and then of course, of course you're going to hit OK, make sure you know which folder it's being saved to, so then you can submit that to the Google Classroom. So please make sure you do that when you're all said and done. So I'm going to quickly go over the expectations for checkpoint three. So first off, and if you guys remember my example is Pikachu in an ecosystem, which is the uh, desert. So I want to make sure I explain two things for part four. So again, part four, we're looking at the water cycle and the carbon cycle. Two things, of course, that we've covered quite a bit. So some ways that you could go about this is finding some images online, okay, putting them up. Uh, so again, I have some clouds, some rain in the ocean, and I have some arrows, right? I might want to put one, two, three, four to explain different sections of how water's moving throughout the water cycle. So the main goal of this is for you guys to prove, again, that you understand how water moves around in your ecosystem. So you also want to mention too, how does this affect your Pokemon's survival? So for instance, how would this affect Pikachu in that environment? So that's for the water cycle. Uh, some key words that you could use, think back to that Bill Nye video, right? He mentioned words like evaporation, condensation. So again, you want to be using terminology like that when you're explaining your, your, um, your water cycle. So that's for water cycle. For carbon cycle, very similar as well. You want to have some images. Again, this image here, I just took one that already had some arrows in it. Again, there's no writing. I'd have to fill in the detail, right? So again, uh, this is not ideal, but again, you want to make sure you're adding in pieces of information telling me, okay, how is the carbon going from underneath the ocean and going back into the air and then uh, cycling around again, right? You want to break it up in steps put a little bit of information in there for me. Let me know again that you know how car the carbon cycle is working. Uh, and then again, mentioning too, how is your Pokemon involved in the carbon cycle? This brings us to part five. So first off, you wanna pick two different ways humans have an impact on an ecosystem. So I chose uh, the two following up here. So I chose uh, bulldozing land, so clearing an area, and then of course, littering. So the second part is explaining how these, of course, will change the ecosystem your Pokemon's in. So why are people doing this, right? Uh, what happens to the ecosystem when these things happen? And how is this gonna affect your Pokemon? So what's the day-to-day -day life of Pikachu? Um, and like, how is that gonna change his day-to-day -day life? Okay. So again, that is the second part for part five. All right, here's the last part for part uh, five here. So you're looking at mentioning how these impacts could lead to the endangerment or extinction of a species in your ecosystem. So what species could become endangered, right, due to these human impacts? I chose the hummingbird here for my desert ecosystem. So how would clearing land and throwing some litter around in that ecosystem cause this uh, animal to go extinct? So again, you wanna think about how and why. Make sure again, you submit this as a copy. So again, make sure you make a copy of it before you submit it. All right, until next time, 